Gentlemen, I am about to send you headfirst to fight killer robots, fanatic demons, and a near limitless army of green serial killers. All of you will probably die. Any questions? But sir- Welcome to Warhammer 40k, Dawn of War, Dark Crusade, a 2006 RTS game expansion that cobbles together the ridiculous world of 40k with an RTS game that treats soldiers as expendable, aliens as enemies, and explosions as necessary. This is a game I've been told to check out quite a bit, probably because it's one of the few worlds without a Geneva Convention. Everyone is attacking on every single side. I got three minutes left. Oh my god, there's so many. They can't even move. Dawn of War also came out in 2006, but my god does this game hold up well, and today we're gonna find out exactly why. Along with, you know, nuking hundreds of thousands of people into- so Welcome to Warhammer 40k Dawn of War 1, Dark Crusade. Ignore the uh, pink and yellow Necron in front of you, that, that is what all Necrons are actually supposed to look like. So this is kind of one of the founding fathers of specifically Warhammer 40k RTS games. And today we're gonna go through and play three different matches to show off all the races. So the seven races in the game are Chaos, the Eldar, the Imperial Guard, the Space Marines, the Necrons, Orcs, and the Tau Empire. But of course, because this is Warhammer 40k, we do have to go into the Great Army Painter first. You can ignore my pretty princess ponies here. We do have access to all the different factions in all their color schemes and great things like that. I like how there are all of these highly advanced creatures over here. We have the Space Breeds, kind of scary orcs, and there's just this this dude. All right, I have painted all the armies and now they look definitely very normal. So we can head into skirmish and just do a two player map just for right now. I will do the nice suburban neighborhood of the Valley of Corn. And so then we can just go accept and choose our race. For our first one, I'm going to do the Cadian Imperial Guard versus the Orcs who are going to be uh, completely invisible. And for this first game, I'm just going to put the AI difficulty on lower because I'm just going to explain all the mechanics and how the game generally works. And and as soon as we get in, there we go. So our main builder is a tech priest engine engine seer. I, I keep thinking that that's a misspelling of engineer. If we click on our main building over here, we can go and train more engineers as well as guardsmen since we are playing as the Astra Militarum, which are basically the normal human beings of the whole Warhammer universe. So the first thing we can do is just build a basic infantry command building over here, which is gonna let us train more guardsmen. We'll put a plasma generator over here and start training some actual Imperial guardsmen. In the top left, we have our requisition resources, which is like our normal default resource. And then we have our power. So we have our first set of guardsmen, so we can come over here and use them to capture these strategic points. And that is going to generate us more of these requisition resources. Also, let me go on a real little rant here. You see how that guy, look at that. He just put the flag on there. Then all the units start saluting. That is the kind of detail that is missing in modern RTS games. For example, in Rome Total War, if you try and move your archers past another group of legionnaires, the legionnaires step to the side and let the archers go by. It's like little things like that, which are so awesome in older RTS games that just don't exist in newer ones. So right out of the way, now that we've captured this, we can come over here and build a little listening post on here, which is gonna give us more resources. Because we're playing as the Astra Militarum, the main thing we wanna do is just keep training these really crappy guardsmen. Uh, and then because this is a squad based game, so we can't select individual units, but we go by squad, our units of guardsmen are going to get absolutely massive because there are going to be so many gr units per actual squad. In the bottom right, we can just reinforce to add more squad members. So that's going to bring our squads up to full strength. And we're also going to want to build some commissars, which uh, have, have a really great ability. They just shoot people. And uh, I'd love to be clear, the commissar does not shoot enemy people. So as we capture more and more of these points, we're going to start getting more requisition resources, which again, we can just go and spend on more units. So the way you actually win is by capturing these critical locations. If you have at least two of three of them, then it starts a timer to win the game. So we're just going to bring all of our units to bear over here. And there are the first orcs that we're fighting against. As you can see, we do outnumber them quite greatly because Imperial Guardsmen are not very good. All right, so we will just capture this middle point right here to make sure that we don't lose the game in uh, five minutes. We do actually want to put our guys in cover over here. Oh, they actually have jetpack orcs. So coming back over here, I built a Tactica Control. That is going to let us get some research. So uh, publishes a decree that retreating in battle will be punished with death increases morale all right so because our guardsmen are in cover they're not gonna take oh, oh 
I was gonna say they're not gonna take that much damage, and I realized they all died. Okay, well, we are losing a lot of guardsmen, actually, so we're gonna try and fix that by building more. Also, that research in the bottom right, that guy looks like he is jacking off. <laughs> So we could give our guardsmen a sergeant leader as well as grenade launchers to try and keep improving them. This faction basically just revolves around having guardsmen do everything and then giving them more advanced weapons. Uh, okay, and I think we just lost our commissar. Uh, so <laughs> that is that is a lot of green skins. Okay, yeah, this is not going so great because as it turns out, orcs are a lot better than us in pretty much every kind of way. Uh, humans are not so strong. Oh my God, I'm realizing there's actually like execution animation for the orcs killing normal marines. All right, but as long as we just keep building more and more units, we should generally be okay. Okay, I think we're barely actually holding at this point. They are pushing us back pretty far, but now that we're starting to equip our guys with grenade launchers, it is a little bit easier. Oh my God. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so the orcs can actually build a leader right here, and it is the big mech. He is... And, you know, he's pretty good against guardsmen. So, of course, the solution to beating this really big mech is to just build even more guardsmen. Okay, I don't know how we're surviving here. We're, <laughs> the, the orcs are pretty much just throwing everything at us, but I think we're slowly going to get enough uh, Astra Militara units to hold them off. The grenade launchers are also putting in a lot of work with the AoE. Okay, we are under a bit of a timer, though. We have about four minutes until we lose. But I think we do have just barely enough units to take back the center and we're gonna start teching up so i can show you some of the higher level units as well oh my god i didn't even realize that their their orc leader could just straight up teleport and okay here comes another wave all right, so with a little bit more research, uh, the whole thing about the Guardsmen is that they, they do scale relatively well because we just keep upgrading them with more things, and now we can actually put even more Guardsmen per every single one of our squads. And our Commissar also gains the ability to just execute a friendly unit to double the attack speed of everyone in the area. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's actually working kind of well. Okay, I mean, it's... It's working. Okay, I've equipped pretty much every single one of our units with mortars now, uh, grenade launchers. So as soon as anything appears, it is just <laughs> instantly turned to dust. There we go. I've also built the mechanized command. So we're gonna start to make a basilisk. Okay, I just built it. I'm pretty sure it is dealing vastly more friendly fire damage than anything else. Try to use an artillery strike over here from my Karkson, and I don't know if this is gonna give me vision. Well, I think something died, but I don't know what. I also went and trained some of these Kaskrin and Ogrins. <laughs> I'm just listening to their voice lines. What? I, I built a priest and he literally has no weapons except for a chainsaw and no armor. And his only ability is to make all of his units immune to damage. Okay, I've built pretty much every unit I can at this point. So clearly this is time for the ultimate gamer move, which is uh, putting all my units in one control group and moving them around all at once. Apparently this thing is called a Bane Blade, and uh, I, I thought that it was called Beyblade at first. Well, it should come as no surprise that my army is just all cards uh, they're dying very quickly, but I mean, they're also, I could just use fanaticism, I think, on all of them, and now they're, most of them are immune. I mean, most. And how does this, uh, oh, okay, I think the, uh, the Bane Blade is pretty strong, I'm not gonna lie. Something, uh, something tells me. Oh my god, I just realized every single orc building has a turret on it. There's like four turrets on the main building. All of their power structures have turrets. Okay, well, it looks like all of my guardsmen just died, and I guess I shouldn't be surprised by that. Fortunately, I can pretty easily rebuild literally all of them. Actually, I'm not even sure why I need the guards, but it looks like the Bane Blade is kind of just killing everything on its own. I like how with these psychers, their main ability is they basically just strip someone's soul, except it has a chance to kill themselves. I'm, uh, I'm seeing a pretty sudden theme in the Imperium, and it is, uh, everything kills your own soldiers. One of the things that makes me kind of sad in 40k is that there there isn't really a skaven but honestly i think humanity is the skaven faction okay i think we finally done it, it uh, you know it took a lot of imperial lives but what doesn't and that should be the end of the game now the imperial guard faction is pretty great but what i love a lot more are the other two factions we're gonna play namely the first one chaos and it only makes sense that the chaos space marines go against the normal space marines and since i don't really need to explain the mechanics 
mechanics quite as much, we could just crank that AI difficulty back up. Okay, so post recording, I spent far too many attempts doing this at higher difficulties before lowering it. I've explained the mechanics of chaos nine times and I'm going insane. Their space breeds are much more powerful than our space breed. All right, that doesn't, this, this map fucking sucks ass. We do have these raptors at least. All right, hold on, I need to quit again. My fucking God, why is this so hard? Really, the one time I'm fucking winning and the AI is just like, oh, uh, actually, I'm not even gonna do anything. Jesus Christ. Okay, what, what the actual cock and balls? The Space Marine hero units have actual plot armor and they just whip out a group of roided up Astartes halfway through the game if they're losing that AOEs all my stuff. It is literally lore accurate Space Marines versus like lore accurate chaos. Anyway, back to the video. Getting into the game as chaos, our main gimmick is that our builders are these really crappy heretics over here. Uh, the only real ability they have is forced labor, which makes them build faster, but also may kill them if I forget about it. Our main beginning unit is these really, really terrible cultist squads. They're not terribly strong. Uh, they're they're not they're not really good at anything, but they can capture points, so we do kind of just want to use them for that. From the chaos temple over here, we can build raptor squads, and those are like chaos space marines but with a little difference. These guys are really, really good at killing a lot of the early game units because they are just melee jetpack guys. Oh, and uh, okay, I forgot about their hero Yuta over here who's uh, a force commander and is basically Goliman. Goliman. The whole having jetpacks is very helpful for, oh, they're trying to capture my thing over here? Eh, I don't think so. Normal space marines are very good, but again, nothing can really stand up to the raptors at this point in the game. The, the force commander over here, uh, we're basically just gonna try and play a game game of keep away because he is so much stronger than anything else we have. This man will kill effectively infinite cultists if he is given the chance. I also made sure to tech up our HQ so that is gonna let us get a whole bunch of new technology and units. We do have normal space marines over here which are the equivalent of their also normal space marines. I mean we're chaos nothing is normal but we can also give our raptors flamethrowers and our space marines some heavy bolters. So our sacrificial circles coming up so that's gonna allow us to build the unholy monastery that is gonna give us some of our super tier units and some of the chaos ones are completely ridiculous ah there is their second hero the chaplain the chaplain the the charlie chaplain and looks like Gilliman. is back so we're gonna we're gonna want to run away because the space marine heroes are way better than ours all right time for the last structure which is the demon pit i also built some corn berserkers over here i'm not really sure how good they are that is a lot of melee damage i love how wide their stance is while they walk. I mean, let's see. How good are they against just normal space? Well, not not very when they run away. Okay, when they actually get in melee, they are killing them very quickly. Holy crap. Okay, so the demon pit is done, which means I am going to research a demon prince summon because the corn berserkers are good, but yeah, they, they can't handle all these space breeds on their own. Although I did just give our raptor squad like four flamethrowers, so I'm kind of curious how that works out. They just <laughs> it's just so many flamethrowers. Okay, the Space Marines are actually putting in a lot of work because they do have multiple heroes here and a lot of our units are not so good. Actually, I say that, but the Corn Berserkers are somehow not all dead. And four heavy bolters on all of our Space Marines is doing a lot. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now I have my Chaos Sorcerer. Uh, he should be pretty decent. And I think I can actually... Yes, there we go. I can summon a Demon Prince on top of my Chaos Lord. Yeah, and this, this is what I was talking about with the chaos cultists they're not so good all right so now if i use the summon demon prince how exactly is that gonna pan out i mean that's oh wow okay and he, and he damages all of my friendly units around him he is big holy crap Demon Roar, Tainted Auspex. I think I can get him more abilities as well. He does 300 damage per basic attack what does that look like it's uh well, they are basically dead. Oh, oh my God, he just eats people. These animations are so awesome. Well, while the Demon Prince is over here, just beaten face, uh, I did also build the Defiler and he looks so goofy. He's got a flamethrower, wow. And is kind of just freaking out on the ground around him. Oh yeah, I can also summon some demons right to the battlefield, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure, yes, they just instantly teleport in here. And... Okay, they're gonna get grilled. Oh wait, I did, did my... Demon Prince just die? Well, I probably should have been paying a little bit more attention. All right, now I have enough Space Marines such that I think this is okay. Although I can summon the Bloodthirster. Oh, that's just gonna take a random one of my aspiring champions. And how you feeling, buddy? Okay, apparently not so good. Holy crap, he's massive. 
Is he, uh, how much damage? 460. Okay, he, he one shot. Yeah, he just ate him. So the Bloodthirster actually loses health when he's not in combat. I don't think he regenerates either, so he just has to be eternally fighting people. Of course, he's also got 14,000 health, so I don't think that's a big problem. Oh, poor poor one Space Marine over here. He thinks he can get away, and no, he, he cannot. Holy crap. Yeah, the, the maxed out chaos squads are quite good. You know what? Let's just bring back our good old demon prince. Watching the bloodthirster just buzzsaw through everyone pretty easily is, uh, it's very satisfying. I'm pretty sure I can actually summon a group of obliterators and summon another group of chaos demons over here just because, you know, why not? At what? What? What is that? They fire like 90 beams at once? And there we go. Chaos is definitely one of the most fun factions because it's just completely weird. We've gotten both of the 1v1s out of the way. We've gotten the Imperial Guard versus the Orcs, the Chaos versus the Space Marines, and now we have one more matchup on an eight player map. And this time is gonna be with Insane AI and I will go Necrons with my amazing skin. So are we going to get completely destroyed? I have no idea. I don't think there's any better way to end this than with an eight player free for all and with my favorite faction, the Necrons, who have the most unique mechanics. So for the Necrons, a lot of their basic units are totally free. So our builder scarabs cost nothing, our Necron warriors cost nothing, and the resource that we use is energy and nothing else. We don't have any requisition resources, so capturing points is not actually massively beneficial. And the only units of ours that can capture points are our builder scarabs. When we do capture a point, we can put obelisks on them, which increases our time bonus. So we build everything faster and it caps at 100%. It's good, but it's not as good as, you know, more money. Our main power structure is just going to be these plasma generators that we're just going to stack all around. They get more expensive every plasma generator we have, and they also get slower to build for every plasma generator we have. As for our main unit, the Necron Warriors over here, I absolutely love them. They're free to build per squad and all Necron units have a chance to reassemble themselves upon death. We also summon all of our units from the Necron monolith. It's kind of like Zerg and Starcraft where everything comes from the hatchery. So these are our basic infantry, but they are insanely powerful. And, and in line with that, they're also like the slowest units in the entire game. I mean, they, they really do not have much motivation considering they are dead, somehow lost all their flesh and have been sleeping for the past like million years. But more important than any other Necron unit is the Necron Overlord. This guy is basically our entire army. He starts the game as uh, pretty naked. He doesn't really have any abilities. He can teleport, you know, just casually appear anywhere. Uh, but what he does gain is a bunch of forbidden artifacts. So if we come over here and build this forbidden archive, that is going to turn him into a powerhouse. In the forbidden archive, there are eight artifacts that we can select from, and we can only give our Necron Overlord three of them. This one causes enemies to move slower. This one allows us to phase out temporarily from existence. This one is a lightning field. This one is a pulse to blind units, but the bottom ones are the ones that are actually really, really good. So we want to save our three slots until then. Okay, so now that we have a decent sized Necron army, I mean, our units are just so slow. The Overlord is fast, but everything else is just, oh, oh. Oh. oh yeah, Necrons also don't get cover bonuses. They, uh, normally if you stand in like these areas, you get a little bit of cover. Necrons just don't care. I'm, uh, I'm kind of curious where all of the enemy factions are. Is, is anyone dead? <laughs> oh, there they are. And that is the Imperium. Well, they do have a lot of guardsmen, but you can see the Necrons just kind of eat the damage and they don't care. Also, some of the kill animations on this guy are him just... Yeah, he, he does not really take a whole lot of sass. All right, so looks like the center of the map... Okay, wait. The center of the map is just completely controlled by the Imperium. What What is going on here? Did they just kill everyone else? Well, regardless of that, I am going to come over here and awaken a monolith. So this is going to start teching up a little bit. And we get to max level on the monolith. It, uh, it gets a little crazy. Well, in the meantime, all of our Necron warriors are pretty much going to die here because that is a that is a lot of guardsmen. They've been, just been funneling you. Wait, their main base is here? Oh, actually, no, that's the Tau. Uh, well, uh, I 
I don't even know what's going on anymore because the Imperium is just blowing themselves up. Oh, did I just lose my Necron as well? Yes, okay, he died over here, uh, but he doesn't actually die. The Necron's dying is more of an inconvenience than it is anything else because he could just get back up as soon as I resurrect him. Oh, that that is kind of scary. That is a lot of Chaos Space Marines. Our Necron just got resurrected and he could also just teleport halfway across the map. There we go. I can get my Resurrection Orb Artifact and my Phylactery. So if I run into the middle over here, here, I should be able to just mass resurrect, so all the Necrons that are dead right now are gonna start getting right back up. There we go, just bring back our entire army. Okay, I am definitely starting to get a little concerned now, because they are, they are breaking through most of my monoliths and things like that. But our monolith is gonna go to the third level, and all we need is one more level after that, and it is gonna become the Omega Monolith. For the time being, I am, though, just gonna build, like, a ton of Gauss cannons here, because I don't really like that. Oh, wait, I had flames ones. I didn't even... Okay, I don't I don't think those flayed ones are gonna last terribly long. And my Necron Lord is waking up in the middle of a party that I, I don't think he really wants to be a part of. Ah, uh, that's not so good. All right, our Gauss Cannons are very good, but yeah, that is, that is a lot of, of Marines. If I use a Nightmare Shroud, I think I can just turn them all up. Oh, there we go. Oh my... I blame the Empire for that. Well, come on. In order to get the best unit for the Necrons, we do need to capture a Relic, and and that is only located, I believe, directly in the center of the map. So we're going to have to fight our way over there to get this relic. What I will do is research the essence of the Nightbringer, which is like our ultimate ability for our Necron Overlord. And eventually, I want to awaken this monolith. That is going to turn this thing into a mobile fortress that just launches nuclear bombs. It's nice watching the Empire Command Squads just walk in here and then instantly die. Uh, wait, can I use Mass Resurrection to resurrect one of my uh, minor... Whoa, that brought back a lot more units than I thought it would. I didn't even realize that all the units I was producing from the previous battle would also get resurrected. Eh, okay, but the Empire has a lot of stuff. Jesus, man. Fortunately, I can just make them all run away and keep reinforcing all of our squads. Please, Necrons, we just need to get to the center of the map, which, I mean, you know, that now that I think about it, that actually does sound like a lot to ask for. Oh, god dang it, the Empire's... There's so many of... What, they just have all these heavy weapons teams set up. What? What just... Okay, now the Chaos Marines are actually just jumping on top of me. All right, let's just bring back our Necron Lord and use another Mass Resurrection. And there we go. Bring back our entire army again. All right, this is getting so evil. I am gonna hope that this Essence of the Nightbringer is able to do a little bit more work. Oh, wow, that... Just killed the tech. He is big. And he is also one-shotting enemies. Okay, we just need to beeline into the center. And where, where is, where is like, man. All right, now we have to fight the Eldar. But, eh, I mean, they're, they're not weak. You know, actually, I take that back. They're, they're pretty weak. And now running away. Okay, what sucks is that because our scarabs are the only units that can capture points. And they're super weak. I just need to bum rush the relic point with them in order to cap it. Also, I have 21 out of 17 squad cap. I don't I don't really know how I did that. All right, so all we need to do is defend this for a little bit longer, and then we can get our ultimate awakened pyramid. Okay, so we got the relic, and now I am upgrading the monolith, and as soon as this thing upgrades, it is going to allow us to steamroll everything. Oh, wait, I, I wasn't even paying attention. It awoke. This... This is the restored monolith. Now, this thing is super slow. Uh, so, you know, you'd think that it's, it's never going to be able to get through. Well, we can actually teleport the entire structure. So, it's just going to do its little Necron magic thing. Uh, and then disappear and reappear right over here. And now, we're going to use this thing to capture all of the critical locations. Or at least two of them. So, we'll go for this one and this one. Because it can literally just teleport on top of them. Now, the weapons it has are relatively good. Yeah, they're, they're, um, it does a lot of damage per hit. It's, they can't even move. And the best part is, I can actually teleport all of my Necrons immediately on top of it at any point. Wait, I just realized what that, that shoot sound, I, I keep hearing a gunshot go off, and I just now click together what that is. It is going off like every 10 seconds, and it's just the Imperials executing one of their units. The Astra Militarum literally cannot get out of their base, because the moment they try to... <laughs> 
so there is two of the three points captured and looks like the orcs are over here but nothing can really get past these gauss cannons because they are they are kind of ridiculous also for some weird reason i can go over the capacity of my wait i'm at 24 now so these tomb spiders can essentially salvage the necron bodies and then i can use them to resurrect additional necrons okay i did want to try something there is, there is a ton of or what is going on over here okay i don't think i really want to mess with all these orcs but apparently they would like to mess with me ah there we go stasis apparently my necrons can actually take control of enemy vehicles so i don't know what this is but can i just uh oh they killed it before i could even grab the vehicle that ooh, that's not so good well you might have a jetpack but i could just teleport oh my god wait they're the, both of the astro militarums are actually on either side and they're kind of they're kind of over oh my god there's so many the restored model it literally can't even kill all i mean it it's doing a good job everyone is attacking on every single side i got three minutes left this is absolutely insane it's so many enemies trying to take actually wait they're they're kind of like getting distracted by each other hold on can i get the craziest stasis ever off oh okay there goes half their army <laughs> At this point, they're just throwing units into an endless meat grinder over here. They can't even support this. They're actually killing the restored monolith. There, there's just so many Astra Militarum units. I've only got to defend it for one more minute. Uh, I, I think I can mass resurrect pretty soon and then use my Catan. Oh my god, there's so many. Okay, so if I do one mass resurrection, I'm pretty sure there was a lot of dead Necrons here. Ah, there we go. Let's bring them back up and then go Essence the Nightbringer. I've got 10 seconds left. I just need to hold this one point and there is so many bodies of just random empire military soldiers. Holy crap. I, I genuinely don't know how we did that, considering the sheer number of chaos space marines that were there. Also, can I actually see how many kills this thing has gotten? Unfortunately, I cannot, but I'm pretty sure I can look at the overview and see units killed 775. I wish I had a graph because I am sure that almost all of those kills. Yes, the majority of those kills were on the Imperial Guard player uh, that he had an army of 664 and lost 500 units and i'm pretty sure all of my units killed her them well either way there is also a campaign mode in this game uh and it, it's it's pretty interesting i think the skirmish is a lot better personally if you're interested in the market for a warhammer 40k good rts game and you're gonna go for dawn of war 3 don't just play this one instead because it's better and cheaper i have also heard very good things about dawn of war 2 either way thanks for watching see ya